Good evening and warm welcome of everybody to Kotak's special webinar on monthly market strategy. The markets are hitting new highs on a daily basis and everyone is becoming fund manager in the market. The market is looking so easy, but trust me, it's not that easy. We need to be very, very careful while selecting our investments, our stock bets, and that is why me and my entire team, fundamental team, is with me. Markets on mar on sectoral trends. Uh, we also have uh, some stock ideas in which you can invest with a view of next 12 to 18 months. And not only that, we are also here to answer all your queries in our special section of question and answer. So very first, let me introduce my entire team. Uh, Mr. Arun Agrawal, uh, he's, he looks after um, um, auto sector and he's having specialization in that. Uh, Mr. Amit Agrawal, he's having a, a very strong hand on the film city sector and he has spent nearly 15 years in this industry. Mr. Pankaj, who looks after capital goods and infrastructure space uh, and it's a it's a very uh, toughest sector that we have seen in last 10 12 years but now the green of shoots are there so yes i think we can we can we can expect some uh, positive note on the sector from him the most buzzing sector metal and for that uh, we have in the mania and uh, he's he has like spent a lot of time and it was the year i mean to say it was the uh, year for him and most of his stocks did extremely well it's not only that uh, his stocks, but the entire sector is doing well. But yes, he's having like very good command of the sector and he has like given record recommendations. Uh, finally, uh, we have uh, Purvi, Miss Purvi. She looks after um, pharma sector and it's uh, again one of the uh, toughest sector. Yes, and we have seen huge uh, up and down. It's a, it's a most volatile sector and very difficult to understand. But she is also having very good grip on the sector. Mr. Sumit, after the uh, uh, the big, big, big sectors like IT, oil and gas, and um, uh, he 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 knows each and every uh, part or uh, the the core part of the balance sheet uh, of Reliance Industries or Infosys or TCA. So all these all these are with him. So. Friends, like uh, without wasting much more time, uh, I would like to uh, hand over this call to Mr. Arun Agrawal, and he will brief on uh, on the overall entire market strategy to all of us. So, Arun Agrawal, it is up to you. Thank you, Shrikant, uh, for the introduction. Uh, let me just share the presentation first. Uh, in today's uh, presentation, uh, we'll talk about how the markets have been in the month of August. Then we'll move on to some key macro development factors uh, like the GDP, uh, inflation monetary policy. Post that, we'll talk a bit on the uh, nifty valuations. And after that, uh, I'll just uh, touch upon the auto sector and the two-wheeler segment in specific. And then post that, we'll move on to some stop ideas and then we'll open uh, and take uh, question and answers from your side. Uh, so without any further delay, let me just uh, start with the uh, presentation. So if you can look in this particular slide, uh, now this is the global indices performance for the month of August. We look at the center of this chart, BSE Sensex, they have given a perf uh, return of 9.4% last month, Nifty 50, a return of 8.7%. I mean, they were the highest if we compare a lot of other indices globally, whether it's US, Europe, or even Asian markets. Uh, uh, if you look at uh, prior to August, we saw very, very strong rally in the small and mid cap index uh, indices. However, in the month of August, it was the, uh, the limelight was actually taken by large cap stocks, and hence they significantly outperformed the Nifty mid cap 100, which gave returns of 2.2% uh, last month, and the BSE small cap, which was up only marginally by half percent. Uh, in this slide, uh, we have highlighted the sectoral indices performance uh, during the month of August. Uh, it can clearly be seen here that the BSE IT energy uh, telecom and oil and gas uh, gave super returns last month. Uh, they were in excess of 10%. Uh, 
uh, BSC Metal uh, and uh, BSC Reality so I saw some profit booking. Uh, BSC Metal profit booking can or the negative weekend can al also largely be attributed because prior to uh, August, we actually saw a strong rally there in the BSC Metal. So there was some profit booking that happened during August. BSC Auto uh, is one uh, sector uh, which has been a bit underperforming and we'll talk and you know talk about the sector later during the presentation. Now this slide talks about uh, the GDP. Uh, now we are seeing the GDP numbers right from 2001. Uh, in 2021, uh, we are seeing there was a degrowth in GDP of 7.3%. Uh, we all know that's largely because of COVID. Uh, for 2022, we are looking at a GDP uh, number of 9%. Uh, in Q1, uh, the data which came a couple of days back, uh, the GDP was around 20.1%, but that again came on a lower base. However, uh, the RBI and the IMF is talking about 9.5% GDP growth for India in FI22. Now, this GDP number of 9.5% what uh, IMF and RBI are talking about is one of the fastest growing GDP, uh, uh, you know, Indian economy will be one of the fastest growing economy in FI22 amongst all the larger major economies. For FI23, we are looking at 6.5% growth in India's GDP. Coming on to inflation, now this is one of the core uh, segments uh, we believe where, uh, uh, you know, the markets is keeping a very, very uh, strong uh, uh, watch on. Uh, the inflation we see uh, last year went uh, above the 6% range between 6 to uh, 8% and then post that it's now moving uh, between the 4 to 6% band. Uh, in July, the inflation was 5.6%. Now, this becomes uh, important because uh, the RBI's monetary policy takes into consideration the, the inflation factor. In August, the RBI monetary policy kept their policy rates unchanged. Uh, now, the minutes of the RBI uh, August policy uh, emphasized that growth continues to remain focused for them. Uh, if you and we are not, you know, expecting any uh, aggressive policy normalization, given there is still some bit of uncertainty related to COVID cases. However, when we look at other global uh, central banks' uh, views, uh, the U.S. Uh, Fed, which is the U U.S. Federal Open Market Committee, in their uh, minutes, uh, they suggested uh, about increasing likelihood of tapering of asset purchases during uh, towards the end of uh, CY21. Now, U.S. Fed, however, have said that they are not in a hurry to raise their interest rates, so that's you know sort of provided some bit of uh, comfort to the uh, markets. However, we expect uh, the global and domestic bond yields uh, to see increase over the next several months and that largely would be because of uh, as the central bank would be looking to exit the loose monetary policies. Now, the concerns about with the you know Fed talking about tapering is that uh, it could impact global liquidity and money may start to move out of some of the emerging markets. So that's that's one of the things you know we have to keep a watch on how the inflation came comes in, and what the central bank policies you know talks about uh, uh, going ahead. Uh, now, this is on the Nifty side. The Nifty valuation, if you look at, we are looking at a Nifty EPS of around 718 rupees in FY22 and earnings per share of around 819 rupees in FY23. That's for Nifty 15. Right? Now, we're looking at this chart. We can clearly see the Nifty uh, valuation has broadly ranged uh, or, you know, has averaged closer to a 16 times. That's a 20 year data. And there have been few instances when the markets, you know, uh, or the valuations have tried to move towards your 24x levels. So if you look at the, uh, you know, if you're looking at Nifty 50 on FI22 numbers, uh, they are trading close to 24 uh, times P. Uh, but however, when we look at FI23 numbers, they are actually trading at close to 21x. So markets broadly uh, seems to be quite rich and, you know, at full valuations at this point in time. So we have to be, uh, you know, stock specific uh, in our investment strategy. Uh, our preference would be more towards large cap at this point in time, as we talked about, given the markets have been at a higher valuations and followed by mid caps in small caps if really someone wants to invest they really should know the uh, the you know growth story of the company and they do doing a good amount of due diligence uh, in in the stocks india story from a longer term uh, if you look at a really long term uh, range uh, the the indian economy looks set to grow uh, at a at a decent pace uh, the PLI scheme, uh, which will be focusing on manufacturing, uh, we are seeing huge investments happening in the infra space and uh, 
sectorally we are seeing uh, you know some some events happening like in autos if we talk about we are seeing you know something on the ev space uh, these and and we are also seeing the formal informal economy or the unorganized uh, you know sector moving slowly and gradually towards the formal economy so you know the, these are uh, all important things that's taking place and the entire you know ecosystem of uh, startups and you know those new uh, companies getting listed and we are seeing the in investor interest in these companies so i think the overall from a longer term period uh, the markets uh, uh, we, we are positive on the markets, but we need to be uh, be a bit careful uh, given that the value chains at the current uh, time is slightly on the higher side. Uh, very quickly, I'll touch upon the two-wheeler segment. Now, BSC Auto Index, we already talked about, they have underperformed the Sensex and Nifty both. Uh, if you look at Nifty and Sensex, they are trading close to their uh, life highs. However, the uh, BSC Auto is off by around 10% from their own highs. Uh, now, multiple you know events have impacted. We have already listed out here some of them is COVID-19 second wave. There has been a global shortage of semiconductor and chips, which been hampering the passenger vehicle segment more in particular. And the commodity prices also increased, which is impacting companies' margins. Uh, in two wheeler, uh, we are seeing uh, you know some sort of pressure because uh, or because of you know EVs coming into play. We already saw Ola Electric uh, recently launching their first electric scooter. Traditionally, the two-wheeler companies have, uh, you know, seen very strong profitability in their segment. However, over the medium to long term, we believe that uh, pricing competition uh, with new entrants coming into play and low profitability could be some uh, risk factors uh, for the sector. Uh, on the stock picks, uh, uh, we have identified few stocks and uh, we'll be just taking you through. I'll just uh, cover a couple of them and then I'll hand over, the, uh, uh, over to my colleague. Uh, we like Century Plywood. Now, Century Plywood uh, is a player in the building material segment. Uh, we have seen significant interest in the last one, one and a half year in this particular space. Uh, now, Century Ply is more into uh, wood panel industry where they are present in plywood. They are there in laminates, MDF and particle board segments. So they are sort of covered all the major segments within the wood panel industry. Uh, Overall, we are seeing good demand there uh, for, uh, you know, for these products. The demand, we believe, will uh, remain, you know, strong over the medium to long term. Uh, specifically talking on these, uh, I would just like to talk on MDF, which is medium density fiber board. Now, this is one segment uh, which is seeing a lot of uh, interest now. And, you know, the demand has been pretty strong here. Now, the two key reasons for that is one is, you know, there's been uh, a good demand for ready -made furniture coming into play and that would is expected to increase going ahead and the imports also have seen significant slowdown so these two factors have led to strong demand for mdfs the margins and profitability has been very good here in this segment and we are seeing good announcements from a lot of companies a uh, few companies i would say uh, who are getting into this particular space uh, so you know uh, century reply is also looking to expand capacities uh, in the mdf segment and these capacities they'll they are looking to you know fund it through internal accruals so the debt which is very minimal uh, is not expected to rise significantly for them and uh, in terms of valuation uh, i would say they are, they are trading at uh, a fairly decent valuation right now and we uh, see some value in the stock and we have a target price of 445 on century plywood uh, the other stock I'll discuss is on Interglobe Aviation, uh, that's Indigo, where we have a buy rating and target price of 2250. Uh, Indigo, we all would have sort of, you know, some sometime or the other, we would have traveled uh, by Indigo and uh, we'll just look at how the operationally and, you know, financially they have been performing here. Uh, in terms of market share, if you look at Indigo, prior to COVID, uh, they were having market share of around 48 kind of number uh, but uh, in the last six months that had increased to 54 percent and in fact in july the company's market share increased to around 59 percent so they have gained market share during the covid period and they're also working on significant other uh, uh, you know uh, parameters that would help them you know uh, improve uh, their performance going forward they have been they are adding destinations they are adding new capacities they are launching several new routes many of which are for the new sector so these things will help them going forward when once we are behind uh, when, when covid is behind us and uh, they are also you know they also have a good uh, fig, uh, working on their cost structure so that uh, the profitability improves uh, when once volumes picks up uh, the company has net cash in 
who tied this entire covid 19 uh, that was a very very you know challenging situation for the aviation industry and they have been reasonably able to you know uh, uh, get over this so far uh, for indigo uh, assuming you know that uh, we uh, vaccination picks up is most of the population is vaccinated and uh, we are we have covid is behind us we expect that indigo would report profits uh, next year so this is more on a economy reopening kind of theme what we have on interglobe aviation and uh, we we have a positive view on the stock uh, i'll stop you from mine and now i'll ask uh, sumit to continue from there thank you arun uh, thanks for a very detailed explanation about the macro indian macros and uh, particularly about two stock uh, specific things that clarifies a lot about the two particular stocks or investment ideas now moving ahead uh, i would like to ask uh, one good question to all the investors uh, can any uh, can you guess which is the india's third biggest oil refinery after reliance and ioc yes you guessed it right it's bpcl and india uh, we are extremely bullish on bpcl and recommend buy with a target price of 550 rupees uh, government has ind given indications and we all have read in the newspapers that government wants to privatize this company this will be india's biggest privatization deal if this deal goes through now there are multiple factors or reasons which makes us bullish on bpcl if you have noticed then the singapore refining margins have improved significantly in the recent past just to highlight they are currently trading more than 4 dollar per barrel what does that mean it means that all refineries are in healthy uh, cash generation mode right now further if the company is generating good earnings then they should distribute the same money with shareholders so i think bpcl gets good rewards uh, in this case also because they have announced 58 rupees a uh, per share dividend and the ex date for the same is 16th september which is not very far away so in some time uh, the company can get a tag of mnc or a private company if this deal goes through so today you are getting an opportunity to invest in a psu company and if you hold it for a medium to long term then you can enjoy the benefits of an mnc company as per media sources the deal is expected to happen in second half of this uh, this financial year we believe this can re-rate the stock significantly the valuation multiple which the company is getting currently can be re-rated on a higher side and that means that opens a lot of opportunity in uh, opportunity for investors to earn higher returns now company is generating good cash flow company is generating good profit from a shareholders point of view what, what is the most important thing to look at it is the un, uh, return on equity how much the company is generating for us if we look return on equity is expected to improve from 14% in fy22 to 17.5% in fy23 the company is expected to yield a, uh, to give a dividend yield at current prices of more than 3% in fy22 and more than 4% in fy23 what that means that whatever company is generating they are sharing with uh, other shareholders another important point i would like to share is that company has got lot of investment in its book investments in igl petronet lng oil india and others if we look at the per, well, per share value of this that is more than 100 rupees so current price if i reduce the investment value then 400 100 rupees is coming directly from investment only the core business remains a, Uh, is available at a very dirt cheap valuations so we believe that uh, the margin of safety is very high in case of bpcl considering the expensive valuations of equity markets and uh, we also getting a decent opportunity to earn a decent return so in bpcl becomes one of the top pick in oil and gas space that's all from my side hand over to pankaj thank you sumit thanks for sharing your insight on bpcl i would give my views on lnt this is the stock that on which we have been positive for quite long time and we expect the stock to do well in next 2 to 3 years we like lnt we have a buy rating on lnt and we have a fair value of uh, 1920 so lnt is the largest engineering 
and construction giants with a wide presence across geographies and verticals. The company is present in domestic as well as in the international market. The company is having a capability to do large complex projects, so be it airports, high speed rails, large metro projects, building projects. So they have capability to do all these complex projects. And it is a direct play on CapEx cycle revival on which we are talking about. Like it is a buzzword word right now. So LNT is having a comfortable, strong order book of 3.2 lakh crore. This is a huge sum. No other company is having that kind of order book in the space. And this gives revenue growth visibility for next two to three years. So for the next two to three years, we are sure on the revenues based on the order book. Plus, the company is the largest beneficiary. If we talk about it, it's the largest beneficiary from the government's capex on infrastructure. So government has talked about 111 lakh crore national infrastructure pipeline. So LNT is going to be a major beneficiary from the same. And if you look at uh, the order prospects, so company is having roughly 9 lakh crore of order prospects, the pipeline of projects on which it is betting on. Last year, the company has added 1.7 lakh crore of orders. In first quarter, it has added 15,000 crore orders because it was a pandemic affected quarter. But we see next nine months going to be quite strong in terms of new order inflows. So uh, we expect a double digit rev uh, order inflows growth as well as the order book in FY22. And this gives the revenue growth visibility for uh, double digit revenue growth visibility, visibility for even beyond FY23. In terms of a recent uh, quarter results, if we see the company has reported an inline operating profit in its core engineering and construction business, it was up 38% on a YY basis. However, uh, revenue was little lower than our estimates because uh, it was a pandemic affected quarter. But now the things are on track as the labor availability is 100% on their website on their uh, uh, project site. So the company is expected to report quite strong revenue growth in nine months. Company is also delivering well in terms of margins and the uh, management has guided for uh, to maintain the margin of FY21 in and of FY22 as well, despite challenges and headwinds related to raw material price. So we have seen steel prices, cement prices all are gone up. Despite that, the company is expected to maintain margin. Why? Because the execution will pick up and the company is having price escalation clause on the orders which it is having and uh, they have also done a lot of cost control measures over the last two three years so this all will result in a good margins for fy22 as well so based on that we are expecting a 17 percent uh, revenue cagr in next uh, three years so it is fy21 to 24 and earning cagr of 27 percent in its core uh, business core enc business so based on uh, uh, this is strong earnings outlook. The stock is trading at attractive valuation, roughly 15 times on a uh, FY uh, uh, on a forward basis in the core earnings, and it is available at a much discount to its uh, large capital goods players. So uh, in the large capital goods players, if you see, they are trading at more than 25, in 30, 40 times. Some of them are trading at 40 times. This stock is available at around 15 times. So it's quite at a discount. And even if you compare to the small cap companies. There are several small cap companies which are trading at a very uh, small discount to LNT. It's a less than 10% kind of discount on which it, they are trading. So LNT is quite attractive from a long-term perspective. We have a some of the parts based fair value of 1920, where we have valued core ENC business at 17 times. So this gives have a fair value of 1920. We are positive on the stock and we have a buy rating on LNT. That's it from my side. Over to Jatin for his take on metal stock. Over to Jatin. Thank, thank, thank you, Pank. Uh, I take you to uh, one of the one of the Asia's largest bauxite alumina to aluminium complex, which is company which is known as National Aluminium, which is Nalco. So we believe that Nalco is forced to benefit in the coming years given the strong aluminum prices because nalco is the only pure play equity play on aluminum and given the destruction that has happened in china we believe that aluminum prices is expected to remain strong the current aluminum prices is hovering around 2700 dollars per ton 
and as an analyst on the street everyone are expecting aluminum to be in range bound of 2400 2500 so definitely we would see couple of earnings update that could come on nalco in the forthcoming quarters secondly nalco is also long on alumina where we see that because of the high cost pressure alumina price have also gone up the company sell near about almost 1 to 1.2 million tons of alumina in the market so the strong alumina price is also expected to support the company earning in the com- com- coming couple of quarters both the prices of aluminum and alumina will help the company to drive a strong operating performance and that in turn will help the nalco to fund its growth capex in addition to that the company will also help it will also help the company to sustain 5% dividend yield as i already said the current spot price of alumina is 7% higher than the 1 qr fy 22 average that means the current quarter numbers operating numbers is also expected to be much better than what it is estimated at this point of time so and on the assumption that we are assuming of 2450 for fy 22 and 2500 for fy 23 we believe that the current valuation of 3.6x ev by abita is attractive and hence we have upgraded the stock to buy so nalco is a buy with an target price of 100 with this i hand over the call to hemali for his talk on the call on the bfsi space thank you our pick for the bfsi space is sbi life insurance with a target of 1425 rupees in the last quarter the insurance company has delivered a strong vnb growth on a low low base for both margins and ape the vnb growth was 45% in the month of july the same trend has continued where it has grown for grown 38% in the quarter covid tempered performance which we reckon is a one off we remain positive on its high growth and its ability to tangle products we expect the insurance company to deliver a strong 20% ap growth in fy22 on a low base and margins are also likely to expand its conservative actuarial policies provide sufficient buffers we have retained our buy rating with a fair value of 1425 which we revised upwards in the quarter from 1360 rupees this is the end of our presentation i would now request a participants to inter, uh, to put your questions in the question and answer bar i would also ask my colleague rini to take the session on q and a forward and moderate the same over to you rini thank you emali and team your presentation was very insightful now we will open the floor for questions So the first question is from Financial Face. It says, "Please share your views on Bajaj Finance. Is it overvalued?" Shrikant Emali, would you like to take this up? Yeah. Uh, so, like really, uh, for uh, BFSI space uh, and for the financials for all banks and NBFCs, we have. Uh, Himali with us. Uh, she is having experience, deep experience in the financial space, and she is having very good hand on. Uh, private banks, especially, uh, and it, now the sector is like buzzing because of insurance, and she has covered the one of the best stock out of that. So I think uh, she she is the best one that like she can uh, explain about the stock. Sure, Hemali. Over to Hemali. Uh, thank you, Shrikant. So we do believe that Bajaj Finance is an expensive stock. and in this results quarter we revised its target price and uh, uh, upwards but we have maintained reduced primarily because of uh, the expensive valuation we remain confident of its operational performance we like the direction that the company is going to but because of the expensive valuation we are a little conservative on the stock i would also request shrikant to give his views on the technical side of the stock because i think that will be very helpful given it's a high volume stock yeah sure so like technically the stock is forming uh, higher top higher bottom and uh, in a very short span of time the stock moved to the next level not at all expected but uh, the way there is like strength in the entire market and uh, number of large cap companies are really doing well uh, since last almost 3 uh, months and especially uh, after this particular specific news flow on the jackson hole meet Uh, which close on the note 
uh, we saw spectacular buying in almost all the index aggregates, and that is why the stock is moving upward. Yes, no doubt that uh, the, it is like it is it is trading very high uh, as compared to its fair value, and that is why it is looking expensive. And maybe we have reduced rating on it. But uh, otherwise, if we see the overall technical pattern of the stock, then someone is like taking active interest in the stock, and in the long run, I think the stock is going to do well. But yes, in the short term, if we take the view of next twelve months. Then the stock can correct at any time, and that is why we need to be careful while adding stock at current levels. So, if we see the overall entire pattern of the stock, then I think uh, seven thousand six thousand five hundred is going to act as a very good uh, support for it. On the higher side, seven thousand seven hundred, eight thousand three hundred is the level to watch out for. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Shri Kantan Hemali. So, uh, the next question is for Jatin. Which one is the strongest stock to buy and hold from the metal sector? Jatin, is, is there an option? Or so, I mean, as a space, we believe that uh, Tata Steel is one of the best bet in the space, given the deleveraging the company will continue, mm -hmm. and that's the only company where we'll probably see the, the deleveraging happening much faster as compared mm -hmm. to the peers in the market. That largely on the Paris trade, despite the EBITDA per ton moderation will. Start seeing from the second half of this financial year. Tata will also benefit from the strong numbers coming from the Europe, as management is already guided that the current realization in the Europe is almost as high as 100, 100 to 150 pounds per ton. So definitely, that is likely to flow directly to the operating performance without any increase in the cost. Well, if you move to the non-ferrous space, we believe that the Hindalco and Nalco are the better space because given the strong bet. Aluminium and the alumina prices, which are going up, as I already discussed, Nalco, where we have preferred bet of preferred price of 100 rupees, and Hindalco, we have a target price of 565. So on the ferrous, we'll we'll go with Tata Steel, and on the non-ferrous, we'll go with Nalco and Hindalco. Thank you, Jatin. Next question is for Pankaj. What impact will the potential third wave have on the upcoming quarters for L and T? Is that factored in? Pankaj. Just to give you perspective, uh, L and T. If we see overall the construction business, uh, that has not been much affected by the second wave because this time, if you see, the lockdown was restricted and it was uh, localized uh, and more in the cities, and the industries were not touched. even the construction was not there and as far as the labor workforce is concerned they were there on the site now the vaccination drive is picking up and all these companies are vaccinating their employees so construction uh, and the project execution will not be impacted much as far as the third wave of covid is concerned and lnt is having very strong order book and uh, the execution is uh, has also picked up so we believe that the company will continue to grow and beat its double digit revenue growth guidance and we are thank buy rating on elite sure thank you pankaj next question is for sumit what is your view on it stocks for 2 to 4 years broadly if you look uh, it sector is going to remain in limelight for next 5 years too uh, this is a big story which has pan out uh, people have not never thought about the cloud thing but the way cloud for transformation is happening and digitization happening this theme will continue initially only the large companies took the initiative to venture into it but now mid sized company and small companies also need to venture in it if they want to survive so it's a, the sector which is booming is mainly because of the survival of their clients what i mean to say here is that there are two ways to look at it sector one is the core it sector which is the services part and the other is the it engineering some services when we talk about autonomous cars we talk about driverless cars what does that mean that means lot of new technology or innovation is happening and behind that everything is connected with uh, it sector if you look i just to give an idea there is a company called bmw which manufacture cars they have got multiple uh, plants located in different geographies now they are they have uh, put iot they are using iot uh, technology uh, what they are connected they are connected all their plants with iot and they can on a real time basis they can monitor what is the inventory level lying at one plant how much is the 
employees working productivity they can monitor so that is bringing more of more and more efficiencies to uh, to these companies and they are replacing humans with robots to a large extent so that production can be increased efficiencies or productivity can be improved so i believe that the road path is very uh, long the growth trajectory is very high but what needs to be seen is how much is already in the price in the valuations so we believe in investors need to be very cautious at this point in time if so far it sector is concerned we remain bullish on the sector per se but valuation needs to be seen precisely where which stock at and how much earnings growth can come and based on that we suggest go for stock specific approach and good for look for good management and good companies and then invest for a five year perspective thank you sumit next question is which shares to buy now which will probably give great returns in 2 to 3 years shrikant would you like to take this up uh see like uh, there are like number of stocks which can really do well the way there is a pace of economy and um, uh, there is like a calculation on the gdp and uh, the way government is uh, giving uh, sops as well. Well, as number of reforms are there, we can figure out number of stocks. But yes, at current levels, uh, if I re- really uh, want to or would like to give any recommendation, then I would like to go with Nalco, National Aluminium, uh, on which uh, Jatin has uh, already given the explanation that why it's a buy and all. But one thing is very clear that in the near future, we are going to see a lot of activity in all these metal companies and uh, especially in the aluminium sector. So in that uh, we like Nalco. Uh, currently it is at 94. We are expecting 100 in next 12 months of time, which is which is very nearby. But uh, we are expecting some more upgrades in the long run. So certainly it's a buy. If there is any correction, we should look for adding in Nalco as well as Nalco to our positional portfolio. The other stock which we uh, really like at current levels is Larsen, and the reason is because whenever there is like a, a rally in the cons- uh, in the metal sector, after that we see rally in the construction and capital goods so in that context larsen is uh, really looking strong or uh, technically also if we see the pattern then the stock has broken its uh, multi year resistance at 1600 and still it is uh, trading above very uh, very, very nearby to the uh, levels so from here easily we can see the levels of uh, maybe 1850 1900 where we have a fundamental target of 1920 and the last one on which uh, we are bullish is uh, from the insurance sector and that is sbi life uh, we have a buy recommendation on um, icici prudential but it is very close to its fair value of 750 760 but uh, for sbi life we are specifically bullish and we are expecting stock to move towards 1400 Uh, even if we go through with uh, its technical pattern then after a very long time uh, the stock has managed to surpass uh, or to absorb selling pressure which was around 1000 levels and now the way there is like deals in the insurance sector which is recently we saw uh, dealing the um, excide and hdfc life so after that i'm very much sure that this sector is going to get uh, more upgrades but even at current levels there is decent upside from current levels so sbi life for uh, larsen as well as nalco these are the stock on which we should focus thank you shrika next question is from fmcg space what is your view on itc since it has been an underperformer in fmcg sector amit would you like to take this up yeah uh, thank you rini see itc uh, Though the stock has underperformed for the last two years, the key reason for underperformance has been there has been a lot of ESG selling happening by foreign investors. But last two quarters that we have observed that the selling has uh, gone down, gone gone away completely, and we have also seen uh, foreign investments increasing in the company. And if you see the recent quarters performance, uh, the company has done very well overall except for hotel business. the cigarette business has been doing well the paper and packaging business has been doing well agri business has been doing well and uh, even uh, uh, the hotels the hotels uh, may not have done that well but with receding covid cases we expect the hotel segment to do well going forward and uh, they have a subsidiary called itc infotech uh, which has grown 
grown uh, significantly uh, uh, big and we have attached a value of rupees 10 per share for itc infotech and in recent quarter we have upgraded the stock uh, from rupees 257 to 275 and uh, we continue to like the stock and we feel if the current quarter's performance persists in q2 and q3 so we can see the stock going up to rupees 250 from 210 levels so we are positive on itc with a target price of 275 Thank you, Amit. Next question is for Purvi. Should I buy Aurobindo Pharma at current levels? Can you share your views? Yeah, thank you, Rini. Uh, so on Aurobindo Pharma, you know, uh, if you see mm -hmm. in the first quarter, they have announced uh, that they were planning to take up a, uh, do an acquisition of an animal business, so which they also have withdrawn. So because of that, the stock has taken up a uh, beating for the past couple of uh, sessions. And it is continuing to stagnate at the current levels also. Uh, we feel that for the near term, the stock may see some pressure. That's basically because for the near term, in the, uh, as we know that you know, majority of its business comes from the US. So US is a uh, place where there's, uh, most of the pharma companies are, have now stated they're experiencing some pricing pressure. That's basically on account of two reasons. One is, uh, a lot of the companies are having uh, regulatory hurdles on their FDA approved plants so because of which their approvals are getting stuck. And uh, since the newer approvals do not come, the companies also experience uh, you know, pressure on their existing portfolio. So this is a double whammy that most of the companies who have larger exposure to the US are facing. So in the near term also, uh, we feel that uh, the way the third uh, wave of uh, pandemic is going to pan out, it can create uh, the pressure more on margins because of increase in raw materials and logistic costs. So we feel that uh, for the near term, there could be some pain, but for a longer term, one can hold on to the stock. Thank you. Thank you, Purvi. Now we will take a couple questions more. So the next question is, is from auto sector. Which auto stocks can benefit from the electric vehicle boom? Arun Agarwal, would you like to take this up? Sure. Thanks, Rini. Uh, see, electric vehicles is at a very, very decent stage at this point in time. In terms of volumes, if you look at, uh, I mean, we hardly sell any real electric vehicles here. Uh, the industry will see a huge structural change going forward. Uh, the component industry specifically uh, will have to, you know, bifurcate the industries, you know, where the uh, you know, companies will get impacted more once the EV introduction happens. So there's some still some time away. Uh, we'll need to have the infrastructure in place. We are seeing some products coming in, like Ola. We talked about introduced a two wheeler. Uh, we all we also have some other other players having two wheelers. Uh, you know, among the existing players as well. Uh, but the entire space will take some more time. Uh, so you know, it's a wait and watch for the time being. Uh, in terms of a decent stock, if we were talking about, you know, a decent sized company, then not much available right now uh, because everyone are talking about all looking to get into electric vehicles. But amongst them, one company which have got some presence uh, in the space is Sona uh, BLW, uh, where, which came recently came with an IPO and we also came with the report on the company. We were quite positive. The stock actually ran up significantly. Uh, now the stock is though trading at our uh, close to our target price there. Uh, so once you see some correction there in that company, that's one counter one can look at, you know, uh, in the if you're you know looking to work on the EV space. But as I told you, since the volumes are very low right now, uh, EV actually is not contributing to significant revenue. So you know, majority of the companies at this point in time. Thank you, Arun. Now we'll take the last question, which is from the metal sector. Why Tata Steel Long Products is trading at such low PE for so long? Jatin, would you yeah. like to take this up? So on metal sector, we don't look like PE as a valuation. We look at the EV by EBITDA. Because see, on the metal sector, because then the capex have been more, large portion of the books, uh, is, uh, the balance is leveraged because of the capex. And due to the higher capex, uh, probably you have a higher interest cost, which probably then the overall performance at the bottom line. So we look metals on the EV by EBITDA and not on the P multiple. And definitely, if you look at the Tata Steel long products, it's one of the good company in the mid cap space. 
and we'll probably see one i mean six months down the line or probably nine months down the line tata matlix also getting merged into tata steel long products which will further enhance their por overall portfolio and increase the operating performance in the time to come so on the mid cap space though we don't have to have a rating and the target price in the stock but we are quite positive on the tata steel long products from the longer term story thank you jatin i think we can wrap up now it was a very informative session thank you team for making this happen and thanks to all the participants for joining us hope you guys have a happy evening and a great weekend ahead thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you.